external anatomy, the various structures, and this would be the internal anatomy. Let's do the external anatomy first. First we have on the outside, and let's do the head first, we've got uh, sensory structures called antennae. We have two pairs of antennae. We have two little ones that have been cut off here that are called first antennae or antennules. They're labeled it the same thing, either, either first antennae or antennules. Uh, our, our smaller little short antennae that would have gone out about this far, shown in the picture, and then the second antennae, or if you use antennules, then this would be antennae, and they're much longer, going all the way back to about here, so you can see the two sensory structures, short ones and small ones. We also have sensory structures in the form of eyes. These eyes are on a stalk. Um, and you can notice all these little bumps that you see. They're facets uh, called omatidia, and they're a part of what's called a compound eye. In other words, each one of those little bumps that you see is actually an individual, it's like a telescope. It has two, um, it has two um, lenses that can be focused to, and it's like looking through a telescope. So this one little bump will extend out and you'll see a small part of the picture like through a telescope. And then one next to it would see another small part next to it. And another would see a, it, it puts together a picture called a mosaic uh, uh, image, basically. Instead of a nice sharp image like our eye makes, if it was to look at us all standing around here, we would all kind of mix up in a mosaic where one eye would see things one way and another eye would see it a little bit different and a lot of overlap. It's not good for, for um, uh, detail, but it's very good for noticing any kind of movement. If anything moves, you know, all kinds of eyes see it from different directions and it's very noticeable to the organism. So it's uh, very adaptive for noticing movement, which is uh, very important in survival because that movement might be a predator that's about to eat you. You gotta make your quick getaway. All right, so uh, those are the sensory structures. And of course, in the, in the head would also be the brain, which is this white structure that you see inside the head here, with various nerves to go to, like the eyes, the optic nerves, and, and the nerve to go to the antennae, the antennal nerves, etc. You don't need to know that, but just this is the brain with nerves going to various sensory structures. Then that brain connects to a ventral nerve cord, which is the white structure, running the length of the body and goes all the way down here to the end of the tail. Um, let's see, what other external structures? All right, so that's the head. The thorax starts right, it goes from here to here and includes these various uh, appendages. Actually, this is uh, the head, actually, I'm sorry, it goes right here. And these appendages are mouth parts. So this long claw that you see here is the first of the five pairs of walking legs. One, two, three, four, five. The first pair of walking legs is modified into a big pincher. It's called a, a kiloped or a claw. What do they call it? Kiloped. It's actually the first walking leg, but they use it for protection and for uh, catching their prey. And then the second, third, fourth, and fifth pair are just for walking, basically. Um, and then externally from uh, the, so we have the head, which goes to here. Then we have the thorax, which have all the legs and specialized for locomotion. Then we have the abdomen here, which is filled with muscle tissue. This is the part we like to eat. If this were a shrimp, the only part we would eat, we'd break off the tail, would be this part. If it was a lobster, we would eat this part, but also there's a big chunk of meat in the claws, too. But basically, this is the part we like to eat, is the abdomen. Now, under here, on the underside, we have, instead of big walking legs like that, we have these tiny little um, feathery kind of legs called swimmer, swimmerettes. I think that's what they call them. Yeah, swimmerettes. Um, and uh, these are for swimming, basically. They use them as little paddle, like dog paddling, when they are not trying to move very quickly. If they're, if they're on the bottom, they walk with their legs. If they're in the water column and they're swimming and they're not in a hurry or trying to get away from a predator or something, they use these little uh, swimmerettes. They're also called pleopods is another name, but we'll stick with swimmerettes because that's what the book uses. Um, anyway, and they sort of paddle along and the animals can move slowly forward or backwards by the beating of these swimmerettes. However, if there is a danger involved, then you have the tail, what's called the tail fan, which you can see here spreads out. It has the telson, which is the terminal segment here uh, in the tail, the middle, and then there's a paired appendage on either side called the uropod. So there's a uropod on the left, 
and a uropod on the right that's by load, has two lobes. And when it spreads out, it forms a fan-like structure like this. The, the telson and the uropod on one side, the uropod on the other, spreads out to form a fan-like structure. That when that shoots underneath the animal like this, it pushes the water this way, so the animal is going to go that way very quickly. So it's a, it's a fright response, essentially, that when they're trying to get away from a predator, the tail whips up under the abdomen, and the animal goes backwards very quickly, so fast getaways, using the abdomen and the tail. Okay, uh, as far as digestive tract goes, we've got mouth, stomach. Mouth opens here, and the, some appendages around mouth parts, appendages to yeah. manipulate the food and move it around. Goes in here into the uh, uh, stomach, and then the intestine, which is the brown part. Now, this is the part, the brown part that you see, which is the intestine. If this were a shrimp, this is the part that you peel out, and they call it the vein, but it is not a vein. <laughs> It is the intestine, and it's full of crap. Yeah. So that's why you want to get rid of it, because most people don't like to eat feces. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's we usually cut that part out and get rid of it. Um, now, as far as the, f uh, the uh, males or females, they're one sex or the other. This particular one happens to be a female, so these would this would be the ovary with the eggs in it. And how do I know that? Because the third from the last pair of walking legs is where the uh, oviduct for the eggs come out. And if it were a male, it would be the testes up here and it would connect to the last pair of walking legs at the base, which is where the sperm would come out. And also in the males, the first swimmerette would be modified for uh, mating, for copulation, and for transferring the sperm from the male to the female. So. Uh, basically, when they mate, they go belly to belly, and the male uh, sperm duct on the last pair of legs matches up with the female oviduct on the third from the last pair of walking legs, and uh, the sperm is transferred to here. Then the female has the fertilized eggs, which she then, at a later time, after the male's gone away and done his thing, then she releases the eggs and literally glues them on the, uh, these little swimmerette structures here, so that she will have all her eggs under the abdomen being carried. If this is a, a shrimp, all the eggs would be under the abdomen there, a lobster the same way. If it were a crab, a crab basically is the head and the thorax, and the abdomen is very reduced and there's a little flap underneath the thorax, and, but that's under that flap is where all the eggs form. So in all of these uh, crustaceans here, the eggs are carried on the underside of the abdomen. Females are eggs come out third from the last walking legs, and you don't have any modified swimmerettes here. They're all for swimming, and the males, the sperm come out on the base of the last leg, and the first pair of swimmerettes are thicker and not so much used for swimming, but for transferring the uh, the sperm. Okay, um, I think that's. What's the yellow thing? Oh, the heart. Oh. Uh, the yellow thing is the heart, which I would have. Um, I would have made it red because most of the models, the blood circulatory system is red for blood. But this is yellow, this is the heart. And then there are some uh, veins and arteries, but then they blo uh, uh, flow to uh, blood sinuses. So it's not a completely closed system. So I think that's it. Two pairs of sensory antenna. The short ones, the antennules, are first antennae. And then the big ones, the, the antennae, or the, uh, the second antennae, they're called and eyes, mouth parts, all that's on the head. And the thorax is involved in uh, walking and locomotion with the legs. Usually the first pair of legs is modified into a, a large claw. Then the abdomen, the third body part, um, is uh, mostly muscle in the tail and having these small appendages. One, two, three, four, actually, there should be a fifth one here. And then the uropods would be the sixth pair of appendages on there, which are part of the tail fan. The tail fan is composed of the telson and the two uropods on either side, okay? For fast getaway movement. When it flips it under, under the abdomen like that, the animal goes backwards very quickly. Otherwise, it uses its little swimmerette paddling, like dog, dog paddles, to, to move slowly forward or backward. Okay? Okay.